Hey guys, we got a next item to work on here. This is the flywheel from the John Deere 350B. It had this old setup, which you saw in the disassembly video for the torsion isolator. Pins are all worn in, springs are worn, pegs are worn, and this is known to be a lousy setup. Um, I still have the friction face on here, but that's not very common. Um, and if you look in here, the splines are wiped out. So this old version was known to have the friction material come off, the springs get loose, and if the springs pop, it locks your motor up. So, we're getting rid of this. A lot of people went to the 350D style, which had a big rubber hub, but you can't get the flywheels and the hubs are $1,500. Or, the early versions in the, I think the 1010s, but this is of an early 350. This looks more like the center of a uh, regular clutch. It's got four springs in. I got this one for $100 from a local repair guy who used to work on these a lot back when they were still new. This one has just about brand new splines in it. Has two broken springs. I bought new springs and it's rebuildable. So this is the flywheel side. And it's a little bit narrower for splines, but the splines are good. These are known to hold up. These are known to be a much better quality part. So, I want to mount this onto there. Bolt holes are different, so we're going to do a couple things here. And these pegs are in the way. So we're going to start by getting these pegs out of here. And then we're going to make sure everything still lines up right. And I think I'm probably going to chuck this in the lathe, the flywheel, and not turn it, but just be able to mark the centers you know, scribe a circle on here that's truly concentric because I can actually take this in the lathe in the fore jaw and indicate it in. So when I scribe the circle on here that's the distance from these holes apart, it'll be centered on the flywheel because this has to be in the center. If it's off center, it's going to be really bad. Um, and then we can go over to the bridge port. And we can drill and tap all these holes, so this will bolt down. And we can put the replacement springs in that I have. And this flywheel wheel will be all ready to go back on the motor. So, let's get started. I'm going to get these pins out. And, well, you'll see what I'm up to. But one Alright, so we got our five pins out. This should go on here. Here, the nuts holding this together are very tight on this. It doesn't quite slide in there like you'd like. So, looking at this. That's literally these nuts here. It leaves us lined up almost perfect, really. Maybe while I'm on the mill, 
put the neck in the four spots just to make clearance for these nuts. I think that'll work just fine. I don't need to bore this and lose weight, but I could just take a little, little notch on each of these. Just enough to fit these nuts in. I couldn't find these part numbers anywhere on the John Deere website. But luckily the guy I got this unit from had the original book which had this style on a 350. So it does actually exist. And he gave me the numbers, the T24501, which are these springs and there's two different ones here. So there's a bunch of springs here, but not the numbers, and I think these are right. Look right. Take out the broken ones. Little end caps on them. Good as new. I would have done all six springs except they're each about 60 bucks so I saved a good little chunk of change not doing the other four. It goes right down here. Sets in there. I'm still messing with this flywheel here, and I want to put it in the lathe, and this just isn't going to chuck easily. Uh, the size of the gear and such, it's, it just doesn't really fit very well. Uh, so, I was thinking about it, and this thing's old, and the precision is, well, only so precise on a machine this vintage. And when you get the slop of the bolt holes, plus Look at the fact that on these plates you do have a little bit of slop anyway. If I'm within a couple thou, should be fine. So I used some cones for my line boring setup and some all thread. I got everything pretty well lined up, snugged it in, and then I went around and I measured a lot. And I got it within a couple thou of center. So now I was gonna take a center punch. We're going to punch all uh, six holes that we need, and then we can take this over to the bridge port, and we will drill and tap these holes, and then we'll be able to bolt this thing up and be done with this part of the project. We did get the uh, correct bearings in for the engine, so I'm going to finish this up and hopefully get onto that and see if I can get an oil pan and a head on it before the end of the day. Just so it's nice and closed up, and we'll get this stuff posted as quick as we can. Never used these. These are great. You get them in sets, transfer punches. They're usually pretty darn inexpensive. I think these sets, I mean, this is a Pittsburgh Harbor Freight probably 20 bucks, something like that. And uh, basically it's just a pin. You find the size pin that fits in your holes, like that one's too big. You drop down a size. 
that one just barely fits nice and tight, so then all you do is take it, it's got a little point in the center, you go, tap. And now you got a dimple right where you want it. Um, now I can go and unbolt this, and all my drill locations are marked. Makes it real easy to take this to the drill press or the bridge port and drill my holes with some good precision. Alright, so we're set up in the bridge port. I got it bolted down, it's nice and tight. Got a center drill. I just circled the dimples to make it a little easier to see. So we're gonna go and hit it with a center drill just to make sure that we don't have the drill wander. And then we're going for a 7 16 14 thread, which takes a 3 8 drill. So a little center drill, and then we got a good bit. I think we can just punch that right in. And we'll go do all six of them. I guess we'll uh, center drill, 3 8 throw the tapping, the tap in it, and uh, we'll do all six of them. And this should be just about done. The only other thing is once that's in place, I did notice that the uh, nuts were hitting. I was thinking I might stick a end mill in here, mark out where I need to, and just go bump into the edge and just relieve just a little bit of this metal so that the nuts will fit in there without interference. There's old holes where Hair over an inch deep. I guess we'll probably do the same and go about an inch. metal is cutting pretty nice. Pretty easy to work with. Alright, so I got a bottoming tap here. Actually, that's, it's almost a bottoming tap. It's mid, I guess. The regular ones, there's a lot of taper to the end cutters. This one's a lot closer. I can use the threads way closer to the bottom. They're very hard to start these taps, so you kind of use this as a second tap. If you want, you can go and use a third tap that cuts all the way to the bottom, but you can't start a hole with it. That's it. Only cutting the very bottom of the hole. That should let me thread and bolt just about to the bottom. Perfect. I'll do the same thing another five times. Because machining is interesting. But if you have DRO, I wish I did. You can uh, mark the center and then program in the bolt pattern and then you just drive it till it says you're in the right spot. I don't have that. Wish I did. Someday I will. But and if I had that I wouldn't have needed to measure all this stuff either. I could just program it in. So since I don't have that, I got the dimples I gotta look real close. And try to get it right on the money. I am trying to drill them all the same depth, but I don't think it would throw the balance too much, but anything I can do to keep the balance is good.
these are just eyeballed, but pretty darn close. I reached through and I marked everything. It was cut pretty nice though. There's our fresh springs. Torch nice later, all happy, back to good. It's got the nuts on the back. Let's see how this baby fits. Not too worried about the clean in there because I'll take it off anyway because I can't um, hold the flywheel on with this in place. So this is just sort of a test fit.